good morning. And it's not as nasty as it was last week, but I think it's going to be getting there. And uh, how great it is to be able to have a church, a church family to come to, and be able to uh, just sit back and fellowship for a while, worship the Lord, study His <coughs> Word. And uh, before we get started, let's pray. Father, we do thank you for the freedom, privilege, and opportunity that we have to be in your house this morning. First and foremost, uh, God, we just pray that you would keep us safe uh, during this hour. And Lord, just speak to our hearts. And we have so many prayer requests uh, that are on our hearts this morning. We pray for the Patterson family as they are traveling home from Ohio today. We just pray that this week with um, Rebecca being there uh, would be uh, just uh, just the tip of the iceberg in her ministry, Lord. That would be a perfect fit there. That Lord, that you would just uh, raise the money that she needs. Uh, be with the uh, Miss Angel and her family, and uh, just be with our country. Just be with us this morning. Meet with us. Use everything that's said and done for your honor and your glory. Lord, we love you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a theme song, and let's go ahead and sing that. When I get to heaven. I think heaven's going to be a shock for some people, amen? When I get to heaven, gonna walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, gonna see his face. When I get to heaven, gonna talk with Jesus. Thank you. 
one faster. Uh, but you know, I was thinking about that. And I'm glad I chose one uh, this morning that was just a little slower, just a little more involved in worship. Uh, because, you know, I can say, shut up, love you. Love you too. But how sincere did that sound? You're sounding more sincere than mine did because you're like, I love you too. Mine was just rushed. Mine was almost like I had something else on my mind, you know. And look, man, this is Sunday. This is the day he wrote. In a couple of weeks, we're going to be worshiping the resurrection. We're going to be worshiping the greatest goal ever accomplished. I may preach that this year. I may preach it next year. Who knows? But it is the greatest goal that's ever been accomplished. And um, we love you, Lord. Not just, ah, Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. All that you've done for us. First John 4, 19. Why do we love him? Because he first loved us. VBS, no longer for kids. No longer just for kids. It's funny, I was at a Christian bookstore yesterday, and um, they had this, uh, th this packet, and uh, it was uh, full of um, like an animal kind of theme for kids. And I kind of looked at it, but I was with JD, and I was hoping he wasn't going to see it because then he'd want it. And then we got up to the register, and someone had like four of them. And I said, what is that? And they said, oh, it's a BBS pack. And I almost said, oh, virtual Bible study, huh? <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, virtual Bible study is our new Thursday night kind of midweek service. It is going absolutely great. And um, I think there's been a little bit of confusion on whether or not, like how you sign in through your computer. We're going to try to get that straightened out this week. Um, but please join us. It's absolutely free. It's a great time. Uh, Sean, we've been praying for uh, you because I know you got a hard uh, week coming up here on the 12th and uh, with your sister passing away. We've just been praying for everybody's prayer request and we want to see how God is going to grow and how those requests turn into praises when God starts answering them. We don't really take up an offering here at Family Bible Church, but we do have four ways that you can give. One, uh, one of those ways is online, either through our website or through our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Family Bible, M as in Mary, D as in David, or MD for Maryland. Uh, you can send a text to 410-324-6686. Yes. 6686. You can also mail it to P.O. Box 694, Edgewood, Maryland, 21040. Or if you're here today and you came to give, there are canisters over there for you to be able to do so. And uh, Jesus, we do love you because no one ever cared for me like you care for me. Amen. This is a good song. Uh, Charles Weigel, uh, maybe whenever we start Sunday evening services every week, uh, maybe we can get into who wrote the hymns and why they wrote the hymns. This is a good story. I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'm going to make you wait. And uh, it's kind of like, you know, when you see uh, a, a commercial, 3 o'clock in the morning, we just got finished talking about not eating past 7. And uh, 7 at 1 is when all the food commercials come on. Right? And you're like, man, look at that. Man, that steak looks so good. Or that lobster looks so good. Or that Burger King looks so good. But, um... Now this song, it's got a rich history. Charles Weigel wrote it, and it's just got a great, rich meaning. Let's worship the Lord in singing again. I'm excited this morning. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found him in a friend so strong and true. I would tell you how he changed my life
man casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And uh, we do have a lot to pray for. Pray for my stepdad. Did you want that verse again, Ms. Bash? First Peter 5, 7. Uh, praying for my stepdad, Henry, my mom who takes care of him. Uh, praying for my wife and her family. Uh, pray for my family. Pray for my little munchkins at home. They will be here during the 11 o'clock service. It's just so hard for them to be uh, at two services, being so young. And uh, so we just are going to go ahead and let them come at the 11 o'clock service. And also we are praying for William Jeffcoat. William Jeffcoat, who is hopefully going to be with us on August the 4th. Jeff Coat, C O A T, J E F F C O A T. William Jeff Coat. He is a missionary to India and he's been in Miramar, I think that's how you say, um, and for the last six days now he has been extremely ill. Uh, he's a good man, God has used him mightily, and uh, He's a guy that I, I, you know, you really shouldn't like have idols or or people that you really look up to. But I mean, you got to have someone that you uh, that inspires you to move on. Uh, and he's just one of those guys, and uh, he's a lot like me. Just loves to preach God's word. If I'm sick, guess what I want to do? I want to preach. I've had migraines that would knock over a cow. When I preach, man, my headache goes away. I have preached with pneumonia. I've preached with all kind of ailments and illnesses. And I mean, I just didn't feel like moving this morning. And guess what? I'm all excited, ready to go now. And uh, so pray for him. Pray for our one year anniversary coming up. Uh, pray for the music group coming in. Uh, pray for the church's finances. Uh, just pray for a whole lot. We have a lot of prayer requests. Uh, Randy, we're praying for your uh, nephew. Sean, we're praying for your, are you the one that has the green in the family that has cancer? Yeah, my, um... Joanne's sister. Okay, yeah. Well, we've been praying for her, uh, praying for Brother Joe's brother and sister who are both battling stage four cancer. Uh, Miss Tanya up in Caesar County, she's one of our biggest cheerleaders. Uh, somebody will say, you know, oh, I can't be in church today, and she'll get on and she'll say, Johnny Hudson has a service, and uh, we love you, sister, and we're praying for you and your battle with cancer. And uh, Jesus, as we uh, get ready to focus our hearts on your word. God, we just lift these prayer requests up and all the ones that have slipped our minds, maybe even ones that we don't know about. God, you do. You know our needs before we do. Uh, and God, we just pray that you would have your perfect will and way, that your name would be honored and glorified throughout the community. Strengthen our relationship with you, our fellowship with you, our fellowship with each other. Use this song to minister to our hearts. And as we slip into the preaching after that, I pray, Lord, that you would give me your power, clarity of thought, clarity of speech. Speak to our hearts, Jesus. We love you so much. Amen.
starting in verse number one, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And uh, looking through this passage of scripture, I was just going to do a, uh, I was just going to do this Thursday night. And man, there's just so much good stuff in here. I wanted to share it, uh, not really with just a closed group who signs into our VBS on Thursday night. And again, all are welcome, okay? Uh, but I figured it has to go out to Facebook uh, for people that just randomly look on the video and uh, then, you know, decide to stop. But the word shepherd appears in the Bible 83 times in 74 verses. 83 times in 74 verses. Jesus, as our shepherd, seeks us out. Remember, Paul said in the book of Romans that none seek after him. He seeks after us. He seeks us out, provides for us, and he cares for us. I don't know if you know anything about sheep or not, but we're going to learn a lot about sheep. The one thing that I didn't write down, but sheep are dumb. They're just dumb. And uh, you know what? When it comes to the things of spirituality, we're just dumb. Right? All we have like sheep have gone astray. We're not going to seek him. It's he seeks us. And then once his Holy Spirit is in us, he is the one that gives us that desire to learn and to grow. Jesus, as our shepherd, lives with us and is everything to us. He's our guide, our physician, our protector. So he's not somebody that just, uh, you know, comes along once a week. No, he's got a daily relationship with the sheep. As our good shepherd, Jesus laid down his life for us. John 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. As our good shepherd, Jesus knows his children. Listen up, John 10, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. You know, kids are the same thing. Kids are the same way. I can remember last year, I took JD. I uh, was part of a, a, a part of the group uh, of his school that went to the Baltimore Zoo, and there was all kind of kids running around, monkeys running around, uh, giraffes chewing on things, trying to get stuff out of your hair, and all. I mean, it was just it was crazy. JD got to running ahead. I was like, JD, JD. And he didn't listen to me. And I've got one thing that I do that whenever I do it, my kids stop and look at me. Right? It is a specific, it's not even a word. I go, ha! Ha! My kids look at me. They know my voice. Right? I love sheep. I absolutely do. I think they're my favorite animal. To see your soup. Gorgeous. They're so pretty. And every time I look at a sheep, I think of Jesus. He laid down his life as a sacrifice. But my mom has an uncle. His name is Uncle Aki. That's his name. Uncle Aki. Uncle Aki lives in Cherryville, West Virginia. And back when I was growing up, we would go back there two, three times a year down in West Virginia. And, um, and after I got saved, I, I, I got an appreciation for Uncle Aki because he was a shepherd. 
He had all kind of animals. He had, I think he was a descendant of Noah because he had every animal that was on the ark to come off of it. I mean, he played with rattlesnakes and he had, uh, I mean, he had all kinds of stuff, right? But he had sheep. My mom told him, my son loves sheep. So my uncle Aki, my uncle Aki, or my mom's uncle Aki, I call him my uncle Aki too. Uh, he looked like Captain Caveman. Just a real skinny guy, probably about 80 like pounds. You. Captain Caveman. Hunger Bunga, me, Captain Caveman. Don't tell me you never watched Captain Caveman. I don't know who it is. Oh, you are no longer welcome to my church. Get out of here. <laughs> 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 it's not your church. <laughs> Captain, uh, Captain Caveman! And son. Uh, now, Captain Caveman was just, there was a cartoon about a caveman, and he was, uh, uh, he was short, he was all hairy and things like that, but my uncle Aki, man, he was probably like 80 pounds, he was nothing but skin and bones, and, uh, but he was a shepherd, and when he knew that, when he found out that I like sheep, he called for him, Mammy! Mammy! Here he come, running up through the field. Those sheep knew his voice. As a good shepherd, Jesus knows his children. Listen, just like actual sheep, we, as his sheep, go astray. Isaiah 53, verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. As we always do, let's look at some things that we have found in this passage of Scripture. First of all, in verses 1 through 3, we see as his sheep, we we'll just call this five experiences that we have having a good shepherd, okay? We as his sheep experience solace or comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The phrase, I shall not want, has the meaning of uh, be without. I shall not be without. I shall not have a need. I shall not lack anything. Paul reminds us that uh, he will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Listen, I don't believe in the prosperity gospel to where if we are a child of God, you know, we're going to have all the money in the world. No, we're not going to have all that. But we're going to have everything that we need. He will supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm not going to go without. I'm not going to have a need. I'm not going to lack anything. Not only do we have our needs supplied because we are his sheep, but mainly because he is our shepherd. Did you get that now? You say, well, there's not a difference. Oh, yes, there is a difference. He doesn't supply our need because we are his sheep, but he supplies our need because he is our shepherd. Okay? My children don't eat because they're my children. They eat because I am their father, because I love them, because I care for them. Remember, we talked about this last week, okay? The law tells me that I need to keep my kids safe. The law tells me that I need to house my children, uh, clothe, my, clothe my children, feed my children. But I don't do it because I'm, I'm afraid of Dippity Doo Dog coming in and arresting me, one bullet Barney coming in and sticking a gun in my face. No, I feed my children because I'm their father and I love them. So my needs are not supplied because I am his sheep. My needs are supplied because he is my shepherd. So it doesn't say I am his shepherd, so the Lord will provide all my needs. And no, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We see this truth in verses 2 and 3. What's it say? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. 
Forgot to highlight, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for what? His name's sake. Because he is our shepherd, he finds us and supplies us the things that we need. The phrase, he leadeth me beside the still waters, has the idea of a place where the fresh water flows gently, making it easy for us, the sheep, to drink at. So he's not going to take us uh, uh, to Grand Rapids. I don't know if Grand Rapids, Michigan is dangerous or not. It just sounds dangerous. It sounds like a place I really wouldn't want to go to. Uh, but he, he takes us to where, and it's not a stagnant pool. Okay? But it's where the water flows gently. It's a fresh, gentle stream for you and I to drink at. We as his sheep experience solace or, or comfort. We as his sheep experience strength. He restoreth my soul. He's already restored my soul this morning. Like I said, I was just kind of sitting here, kind of dozing off and uh, just thinking about my nap this afternoon. But man, when it comes to 8 o'clock, uh, I'm ready to sing. I'm ready to worship. He has restored my soul. That phrase has the idea of to breathe in new life. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Listen to this now. According to the website, The Working Sheepdog, a sheep is at risk of getting stuck on its back if it is heavily pregnant or if it has a heavy or possibly a wet fleece or if it's like me, it's just simply too fat. Now listen, I am not above embarrassing myself. And I just got to tell you this morning, I thank God for my wheelchair. Because if it was not for my wheelchair, I'd probably have a broken nose. I would probably have a broken face. And I'd probably be in the hospital right now. Because sometime this morning, I asked my wife to help me sit up in bed. I do that once in a while because my back hurts. And I just kind of want to just loosen up a little bit and then lay back down. Well, Sean, this morning, guess what I did? I yelled for my wife in the middle of the night because I fell face forward into my wheelchair that was from the side of the bed. This bath almost killed myself. Because I fell asleep and I fell over. And I couldn't get back up. Just like a sheep. We are so easily at risk to wander away. And once we get on our backs, we don't have that ability to get up on our own. Some good stuff. But once stuck on his back, it's vulnerable to attack from predators like crows and other beasts of the air. We as his sheep experience solace. We as sheep experience strength. We as his sheep experience security. Look at verses 3 and 4. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The phrase, he leadeth me in path of righteousness for his name's sake, has the idea of him keeping us from evil and harmful devices. He does not just. He does so. Huh? He does so. Yes, he does so. Not just because. There you go. If I learned how to read, we'd be all right. <laughs> he does so not just because we are his sheep, but also because he places his name on our protection. It's his stamp, right? Not because we are his sheep. But again, because he is our shepherd. Look at Psalms 31, verse 3. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. 
Psalms 79, 9. Help us, O God, of our salvation for the glory of what? Thy name. Deliver us. Purge away our sins for what? Thy name's sake. Everything that we do ought to be to honor and to glorify him. He helps us. He leads us. He protects us for what? His name's sake. Psalms 143, verses 11 and 12. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. And again, I will reiterate. I know I've already said it, but I'll say it again. He laid down his life for us. My day, the time of the year is coming up. I love the resurrection. You know why? Because if he did not die, if he did not shed his blood, he could be born. Buddha was born. Muhammad was born. Right? But none of them shed their blood, died, and rose from the dead for us. It's funny because we were in the Christian bookstore yesterday. And JD says, Daddy, I want that book. It was a book about that thick, probably about two, three hundred pages. She says, Daddy, I want that book. And it simply said, what is the gospel? She says, son, we don't need a book that has two or three hundred different pages in it to tell us what the gospel is. First Corinthians 15 tells us that, right? And then he was, then he died and was buried and he rose from the dead. That's the gospel. John 10 verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep, but he that is an airling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No man take it there from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Quickly, as we move on this morning, we have, we as the sheep experience solace, we as the sheep experience strength, we as his sheep experience security, we as the sheep experience safety. I like this. This is what drew me in to this sermon this morning. God may speak to your heart in a different way than through this sermon, but this is how he spoke to my heart this week. Verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. I don't know a lot about sheep. I learned this this week, and I'm going to teach it to you this week, okay? During seasons of warm weather, sheep can be bombarded by thousands of insects that emerge after hibernating in the cold seasons. One insect that is especially troublesome for a sheep is the nose fly. These tiny flies buzz around the sheep's head, attempting to deposit their eggs within the damp mucous membranes of the sheep's nose. The flies burrow into the flesh and then set up an intense irritation accompanied by severe inflammation. For relief from this agonizing annoyance, Sheep will deliberately beat their heads against trees, rocks, posts, or brush. They will rub themselves in the soil, uh, soil and thrash against woody growth. I mean, have you ever seen somebody with no arms have an itch? <laughs> it's not a beautiful thing, right? We get to whatever we can. And I mean, I guess people with arms and legs do too, right? You ever see somebody get to the corner and... I just can't oh, quite, and you know, they dislocate their knee trying to get that one spot, and 
and they have their one arm wrapped around their head and their other arm reaching for the refrigerator to hold themselves up. And I mean, they're just, that's what the sheep does. Just to get relief, to get these flies, to get the annoyance away from them. Sadly, a sheep may even unintentionally kill itself. Because remember, it's beating itself in the head to try to kill the flies. Thou anointest my head with oil, the Bible says. The first sign of flies among the flock. How I love this. The shepherd will apply an antidote to their heads and their faces. That's all I put on there. That's all I put on there. Let's dwell on that for a minute. Let's go back. I don't know why I didn't dwell on that. Let's dwell on that. Let's go back. Look. Look at verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. The enemies going to come. The flies are going to come, people. They want to infest their junk in our schnozzes. <laughs> right? They want to annoy us. They want to distract us. They even want to kill us. Maybe not physically. Just spiritually. You know, it's pretty sad that I have a four-year-old and I have a seven-year-old. That's not sad. But the sad thing is, and I'm sure your kids probably got it too, they got a notice about the Momo games. Did they get that? Four-year-olds. About the what? Momo. M-O-M-O. -M and if you're not aware of what the Momo game is, let me sum this up for you. It's a fly that wants to get into your schnoz, burrow itself inside of you, and watch you kill it, kill yourself. Have you heard of it, Sean? Starts out as just something simple. Show that you're dedicated, right? So you may have to like, you know, write something on your body in a, in a magic marker. And say, I'm yours. The game's on. Then you keep going, you go on and on, and it leads to self-mutilation. It leads to cutting yourself. People, that's demonic. We had some guests over our house last night, and uh, even if you're watching this morning, I, 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 I mean no harm, but you know the, the kids sat there laughing about it. No, sir, that is not something to laugh about. There is nothing funny about suicide. There's nothing funny about watching our young people uh, invest themselves in the devil. Listen, God as our shepherd wants to anoint our heads with oil. He wants to keep the flies away from us. That's why the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, um, you know, things that are pure, things that are just, things that are honest. Think on these things. The Bible is teaching us, listen people, stay away from that stuff. Because once we get in Fested with that, we are going to do whatever we can. It's going to control us. And it will even laugh as we beat our heads against the rock and we take our own lives. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints our heads with oil. He tells us to take the helmet of salvation. He tells us uh, that we have a new mind. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Listen, he doesn't want us to get mixed up in this stuff. We as a sheep experience solace, strength, security, safety, and satisfaction. Look at verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is through him that we find the satisfaction that we need. Listen to these verses. Psalms chapter 42. Psalms 42 verses 1 and 2. And, and I love, and I think the whole church loves, 
when uh, Miss Rebecca and Miss Rachel come up and they, and they sing, as the heart or as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee, the song says. But the Bible says, my heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When should I come and appear before God? Listen, going back to the Momo game, going back to basically anything else, what happens? We get our focus off of Jesus. I say it almost every week, just like the Apostle Paul, whenever, I mean, uh, Peter, whenever he walked out on the water and, 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 and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to the water. He walked on the water. I can't even walk on land, let alone water. And he walked on the water, Sean. But then he took his eyes off of Jesus. When we take our eyes off of him, when we wander astray, that's when we get harmed. But he doesn't want that for us. He anoints our head with oil. There's so much in this this chapter, this small chapter of six verses, we can go on this for like two, three months. We can talk about the rod and the staff on how they guide us, they protect us. We can talk about how uh, uh, sometimes when we go astray, he's going to go find us and pick us up and carry us back to the fold. But that's not the end of the story there, folks. You know what happens to the sheep that wanders away? He picks them up and carries them back. He breaks their leg. So they don't do it again. And then he carries it until it's healed. Yes. And then he carries it until it's healed. He shows his love. But he also shows the fervency of the dangers that are out there. Psalms 84 verses 1 through 5. How amiable are the tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found a house in the swallow, a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, whose heart are the ways of them. This morning, as we wrap up, as we think about all the things, all the benefits that we have about being his sheep, two thoughts for you. Number one, are you his sheep? Did you, do you remember some of the verses that we looked at? If you're not his sheep, he's not going to He's not going to go after you. He's not going to break your leg. He's not going to help you when you fall over. But if you're not a sheep, you're not going to get to heaven. Because in the same chapter, Jesus said, I am the door. No man is going to enter in to heaven but by me. Jesus said in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's John 14, 6. I hope it's my prayer for you this morning that if you're not his sheep, that you would just accept him. Accept his gift of salvation. Allow him to be your shepherd. And this morning, are you one of the sheep that have gone astray? Maybe we've just lost our focus. Let's, let's, let's go back to where he is before he has to break our leg, before he has to use that rod and that, and that staff to chastise us. Lord, I don't know how you are speaking to people's hearts, but I know through this message that you have strengthened my love for you, our fellowship together. You've given me a deeper love for those that are around me. So many people in this world are hurting. So many people in this world are going astray. So many people in this world are being uh, uh, led uh, by demonic powers. Lord, I pray that you would use this church and other churches. Praying for Everton Baptist Church 
this morning and, and the next three days as they have their uh, Bible conference over in Bel Air. Uh, God be with uh, uh, Evangelist Hanks and uh, Lord just use this meeting, use the, uh, uh, Everton, use all the churches in Maryland and all across the world for your honor and your glory. And right now, Lord, use this song to minister to our hearts. Jesus, we love you so much. We appreciate everything that you've done for us. Amen. sent in a prayer request for her daughter and her wonderful grandson. We just absolutely love Mr. Kaysen. He's just such a cute little man. And uh, pray for them uh, because they are under the weather. Lord, we just ask you to be with their bodies. Uh, be with the great physician. Heal them. Lord, speak to their hearts um, and just use them. Uh, Lord, just, um, just love them this morning. We, uh, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And um, again, there is a Bible conference um, up in Bel Air. I plan on trying to go at least uh, one night this week. I believe it probably starts at 7 o'clock every night up there on Route 24. And um, I've heard Brother Hanks preach. He's a good preacher. And so anyway, any other, anybody else have any other prayer requests or anything? Sean, we love you. Praying for you. Praying for your family in the next uh, few weeks. I know it's going to be a hard time for you there. We do have a theme song. And uh, let's have a song to start our week. Okay? Kind of set us off a little. 